Remember what Domina used to say? An empty stomach breeds an empty mind. And you will need your mind. Our upcoming battle cannot be won with a blade. I miss her. So do I. One wonders. Could we have done more to prevent her demise? But cheating fate is no trivial task. Well, it is best not to dwell in the past. It has taken much to get here, and we have achieved many great things. It was a pleasure watching you grow and become the great commander you are. What will you do after everything is said and done? Do you think I can be senator? I do want to try my luck in politics. That is a nice thought, and I'm sure you will do well. But it is not over yet. May I remind you, Loco is still the consul. You said after all is said and done, Cineros. But yes, we should be careful indeed. Kikoro and I will meet you in the Senate tomorrow morning to prepare for the trial. Speak as if your life depends on it. In many ways, it may. Speaking of that trial... It's so good to see you again. And looking well. It's wonderful to see you again, Liviana. How have you been? I've been well. The children are growing so fast, you probably won't even recognize them. Having children has completely changed my perspective. It's incredible how your priorities shift. Tiberius would like to tell you about something important. Indeed. I would like to testify on your behalf tomorrow, at the trial. Against my brother. Are you sure? He will be furious. You might be placing yourselves in a great deal of danger. We are already in a great deal of danger. My brother is becoming completely unhinged lately. He's out of control. I genuinely fear he may have our own children killed because they carry your blood. If you allow me to comment, your testimony will be an incredible boon for our trial tomorrow. Thank you. My path to atonement will be a long one, but this will be a big first step on the way. We must return home before Lurko catches wind who we are visiting. I'll see you tomorrow at the trial. Good luck. You should get some rest. Tomorrow's trial will require you to have your wits about you. You are well versed in politics. Be honest now. Do you think we will win? Those who try to predict the future will only make a laughing stock of themselves. Those who are prepared for all eventualities win in the end. I just wanted to tell you how glad I am to have you by my side. It was not only my duty, but my pleasure as well. Your father made me promise to take care of you, no matter what. Looking at you now, I can only feel pride. I just wish your father were alive to see these days. What will you do after all of this is done? I've been through much, but I have to admit, these days I feel... old. <laughs> I think I want to see my homeland again. To tell you the truth, I feel like I'm ready to die. It would be nice to see Ali Karnasos again first. Of course, I will personally accompany you. Thank you. It is a good day, my friend. Any particular reason for your cheerful demeanor? I've been thinking. You've done the right thing by not crossing the Rubicon with the Legion. I admit, I was tempted. It's the right choice. You'll see. Where's Kalida and the rest of the guard? Kalida was a bit preoccupied. She's concerned about Corvinus. You know that sneaky bastard is still unaccounted for. What if the Senate favors Lurko? They won't. The Senate is a virtuous and wise institution. They'll see the truth of the matter. Do you think Kikoro's help will be enough? Kikoro is probably the best advocate in the Republic, and he's the Consul. But what do I know? I'm just a soldier. Trust your brothers in arms. Besides, Kato is as much a soldier as any of us. I hope you're right. What's on your mind? Do you think we will succeed? Your cause is just, and I believe we can convince the Senate. However, our opponent is devious. That worries me. What do you think Lurka will do when he loses? I worry that he will not obey the will of the Senate if the result fails to be in his favor. Will you obey the Senate if you lose? If the Senate sides with Lurko, they're as corrupt as he is. Perhaps. But you cannot be the judge of that. Is it even possible to win a trial against a sitting consul? If it were not, our Republic would be doomed. Those with the greatest power must be under the most exacting scrutiny. But to answer the question in the spirit I think it was asked, we have Kikoro on our side, the second consul. This sort of situation is precisely why there are two. I'll see you at the Senate.
We will have order in the Senate now. Debating the clarity of the augury will not be productive. The Consul himself stands accused. Nothing could be of higher importance. Any other relationes shall be set aside. The result of this relatio again shall be decided per discessionem, and before the sun sets. You may continue, Consul, but please refrain from delving deeper into matters completely unrelated to our discussion. Naturally. May I restate the necessity of using my actual title, Dictator, instead of Consul? But you are not Dictator anymore, are you? Do you even know what Dictator in Perpetuo means? The Legatus has a point. Your title was granted for a limited time in order to solve a crisis. Even though the time has not passed, we can certainly say the crisis exists no more. I beg to differ. The crisis has evidently not passed. It has merely changed context. Allow my colleague Senator Antonius to display with clarity how unprecedented and absurd this relatio is. Mm, dear Senators, first let us consider the source and the spirit of the regulation that allows us to appoint a consul to the position of dictator. And yet, despite all this, we somehow ended up here accusing the very man who was tasked with the prevention of this crisis. Thank you, Senator, for this detailed and above all long explanation of something we all knew. Our memories have been thoroughly refreshed. If that will be all, we will finally discuss the evidence presented against the Consul. Let us consider the events leading to the capture of Marcus Aurelius Cotta. Is it true that you were collaborating with Mithridates Megas? Rumors. Nothing but rumors. Maliciously circulated by my enemies, the enemies of the state. I hope you remember that there was absolutely nothing to suggest those rumors had any basis in fact. My fellow consul, honorable senators, are we here to gossip like housewives, or to discuss proper matters of state? No evidence back then, but now we have a witness. Tiberius Vitellius Scaeolia. Indeed. And I do believe I have credibility here. You. I know you must be surprised. And I'm sure when I give a detailed account of your business relationships with Mithridates, our fellow senators will be equally surprised. I always knew you were jealous of me, Tiberius. But I never thought you'd be foolish enough to testify against me in this manufactured case. If the Senate finds me guilty, you will receive the same sentence. You are my brother-in-law, Scaeolia. I can't let you incriminate yourself. After everything my family has done to yours, you are a truly generous person. But I still have a few choice words about my brother. Illuminating. Are you truly illuminated by a madman's ravings? Tiberius may be my brother, but his envy of my position is well known. He hardly qualifies as an impartial witness. Can any witness be truly impartial? Shall we perhaps talk about the infamous invasion of Egypt? Infamous is the correct word for it. The Legatus ignited a war in a land that was already a province of Rome. He brought chaos and terror to Africa. The way I see it, he installed law and order, and saw to it that the rightful queen of the people now sits on the throne. I must protest. This is highly unusual, having a foreign ruler comment on our internal affairs. The so-called foreign ruler serves Rome as the queen of our vassal nation. I must agree. The queen's opinions on this matter should be of utmost importance. We're listening, Queen Cleopatra. Of course you are. Now I shall tell you how your dictator redirected taxes paid by our people into his coffers, and how he managed to get both his accountant and proconsul murdered in the process. A chilling account, Your Majesty. 
Thank you for your testimony. Once more, I must direct your attention to the utter lack of credible witnesses. Neither this legendary ledger nor the fictional accountant who wrote it are anywhere to be seen. Then explain your presence in Alexandria, at the time of the battle. Why would Ptolemy, who at the time was waging war against Rome, be on friendly terms with you? I was trying to clean up the diplomatic mess created by your legatus. I take it you were an ambassador to Egypt at the time. I wasn't. But in the end, I salvaged the whole campaign. Ptolemy would have easily killed you all. I wonder how you know these things. So Ptolemy had no reason to keep you alive. Yet somehow he did. Very interesting. Let us end by discussing the recent campaign against the barbarians of Gallia. You did kill members of the dictator's Praetorian Guard, didn't you, Legate? It was self-defense. His Praetorian Guard attacked mine. Uh, pray tell, why would my Praetorian Guard attack you? Indeed, why would one Praetorian Guard attack another? Enlighten us, dictator. Is that for me to answer? He should answer first. I see. Uh, I see Senator Antonius has something to add. Oh. Right. I thank you for this opportunity to talk about the history of foreign leaders being represented at the Senate. First of all... Once again, thank you for your detailed explanation of this important issue, Senator. Shall we finally proceed to decide now? We certainly shall not. The sun has set and a decision was not reached. I believe this relatio is to be declared undecided. Undecided? This cannot be! Dictator Lurko is correct, Legate. A decision has to be reached by sunset. And if not, the relatio will be undecided. But in light of the overwhelming and damning evidence against the dictator, I believe this relatio deserves a proper decision. We reconvene tomorrow at sunrise for the final decision. This shall give the dictator a fair chance to defend himself. One final time. This session is at an end. Let's wait until everyone has left so we can talk to Kikoro in private. I admit, I was rooting for you. But you really did defend your case excellently. Tomorrow's hearing will be a formality. You've pretty much won. What you're doing is unexpected, but admirable nevertheless. It seems you're not beyond redemption when it comes to the morality of your actions. However, I want to be certain that you understand the gravity of what you've done. You have murdered the Praetorian Guard of a sitting consul. There may yet be consequences. Their deaths were unfortunate, but necessary. I hope the Senate will understand. The Senate is made of men. It is as moral as the people who inhabit the building. I think the risks themselves are irrelevant at this point. The Senate has been convinced of Lurko's guilt. Despite his futile stalling, you've made it clear to everyone that Rotelius Lurko's war in Gallia was nothing but a power grab. He wants to abolish the Republic and call himself King Lurko. It serves no purpose to speculate about his motivations. All that matters is that the Senate has been convinced. If only we could finally prove that Lurko killed my father and Lucullus. It's best to refrain from mentioning these accusations unless we can prove them. Compared to the level of treason implied, the murder of two Romans seems trivial. Should he repeat his accusations of murder, it is my hope to use precisely this argument to shield you from them. It may be trivial to you, but it is justice for me. Now I worry about what Lurko might do with the time his lackeys and the Senate have bought him. What is left for him to do? All legal options are exhausted. His legion is disbanded. Even Wixie is finished. And after today, his support in the Senate is gone. Yet he remains at large until tomorrow. His lack of options may just make him desperate. I agree. We must stay vigilant. What do you have there? Food for the Legatus and his friends. Let me have a taste. It's for the Domini only. My Dominus does not eat anything until I've tasted it. Well... 
All right, then. Mm. Delicious. That's odd. I haven't ordered any food to be brought here. There is no eating in the Senate. Cineros, spit it out! Oh, excuse me. I... I feel dizzy all of a sudden. There is an odd taste to this food. Sit down, if you feel unwell. I... can't... The food was poisoned. Where did that Serwa go? Cinderos! No! Stay with me! He's lost consciousness. We need to fetch a physician immediately. Armed men have entered the forum. We brought your weapons. Old man. He's dead. Lurko. I shall skin your back and lay you on salt. I shall feed your cock to street dogs. Mull! Grieve later, bestia. They're here. Sure, no one escapes. Worthy of the arena. Corinus, that honorless piece of shit, he got away. And Skyewala has your sister. We'll need to get her out of that villa. Cineros. Is he He's dead. Rest well, old friend. I will never forget your loyalty. I'm sorry. He was a good man. My friend. Your sister. We must be careful. It's likely a trap. Meet us in the Regia when your family is safe. Our dear Pontifex, Maximus Aurelius Cotta, will be good to have on our side. <laughs> we have basically already won. This attack represents a clear legal victory. Marcus, this is not the time. Help us! Try to hold the mask, Eolia. We're coming to you. Fortuna sent you. 
Be swift, though. My sword arm is wounded. Think of it. How did they get past your guards so easily? I was a fool to entrust my protection to my brother's men. He knows you won your case in the Senate. And for the first time in his life, he's terrified. He's going to kill all of you. That's insane! That will only ensure he is executed rather than exiled. He still believes he can consolidate his power if you're gone. Ever since you ruined our schemes in Greece, you and your friends are the only people he truly fears. And despite all he's done, you've always managed to survive and come out on top. This is his final chance to get rid of you for good. Why are you helping us? What kind of man would stand idly by while his own brother tries to murder his wife? A man with divided loyalties. They are divided no longer. I made my choice. Why didn't you report this plan to the authorities? The Consul of Rome organizing an attack to kill a war hero. That's insane. No one would have believed me. Besides, my brother is a dictator. He is the only real authority here. Thank you for testifying in front of the Senate today. It wasn't something I did lightly. I know his crimes reflect upon me and my family. I'm glad you did it. Both of you. He would have come for us no matter what, I'm certain of that. I really think you should get out of here. Lurko is likely to try and finish the job. Save my sister, Scalia. Run! You humble me with your courage. I will keep her safe. Enough chit-chat. Go, now! You are alive. Please don't sound so surprised, Pontifex Maximus. Forgive me. We've heard the unthinkable has happened and Lorco tried to assassinate your family. I could not believe my ears when Kato told me about Lorco's betrayal. This shall not go unpunished. Do you think we have enough evidence to condemn him now? We will need to come up with a very good reason for doing this. I'd like to see him try. I don't even know what to say about the fact you are entertaining the thought he might be innocent in all this. He attacked my sister as well. Scalia was protecting her. Truly? What an unexpected turn of events. I suppose there is good in everyone, except Yurko, I would venture. Corvinus murdered Cinderos, attacked us at the Senate, and then turned tail. What if he comes back for us? I don't believe anyone close to you is safe. Lurko's lapdog is slippery but persistent. With any luck, we'll be ready for him. Your faith is inspiring. We need to seize the initiative. Corvinus can't be too far away. As long as he's in the wind, we can't be safe. Kalida can find him. Maybe, but it'll take some time, and we don't have much to spare. I know where he is. Maybe I can ask some of my friends in the Senate. Lurko must have allies, and perhaps some of them know a few things. Highly unlikely. Chances are not even Lyurko knows where that man is. I know where he is. An augury might reveal his location. Will we set a chicken loose in the streets of Rome and hope that it guides us to him? Hardly. I know where he is! Pointless bickering and posturing are among the reasons Lurko wanted to be dictator. Will you all just listen to Bestia? All right. There's no need to yell. 
He is a Campus Martius hiding with a group of gladiators he has hired. We can go there and get him. Are you certain? These are men I have fought beside in the arena, who looked up to me once. I am certain. What if it's a trap? What if it is? Do we have a choice? Let us go, but keep in mind I want him alive. He killed my Magister. I will make no promises. Lucius Erucius Corrinus. We are here. Come out and play. The entire ensemble is here. I guess you're ready for the final act. I have to admit, I'm impressed. I did not expect you to be able to find this place. Best your nose, Campus Martius, inside out. <sighs> this isn't the first time I've underestimated that Bellatro. You will pay for killing Cineros. Taking out the old man wasn't my intention. He died in your stead. If anything, I'd say you killed him. How is it that you continue to survive? <laughs> Lurko has said that very same thing about you on many occasions. Gladiators! By aiding this man, you are making yourself accomplice to murder, corruption, and treason. Do you believe a man such as he will work to have you exonerated? Of course not! He will leave you to take the fall. What good will his denarii do you when you are strangled to death for his crimes? Pay no heed to his words. We work for the Consul himself. Vitellius Lurko will ensure that no punishment of any kind will befall us. You, Hiberius, and you, Sisena. You fought for us all those years ago when we took back the Legatus' villa. That's right. You paid us almost double the going rate. I spent a whole week entertaining myself with Rome's finest wine and least fine horse. <laughs> <laughs> Will you join us now, for old time's sake? I will. I will as well. To Tartarus with this stingy son of a dog.
You must try harder. I will skin your face and drink from your skull. A charming notion, but improbable. May I propose a different option? There are no options. You will die now. Or we can be sensible about this and keep him alive. He probably knows a lot about Lorco's plans. Besides, Corwinus is a capable and smart warrior. He'd be useful to us. Have patience, Bestia. You can do whatever you want to him after we question him. Killing him will serve no purpose. It will bring me great satisfaction. Bring him to my villa. Lurko's wings are clipped now, but still be careful. Finally, we can stop watching our backs. Corwinus, you are under arrest for the attempted murder of this man and the actual murder of his service. You're coming with us. Corvinus is inside. Do you think he's ready to talk? His attitude has become quite a bit more cooperative overnight. He will talk if he survives, meaning if we can restrain Bestia. He was quite fond of Cineros, as we all were. We all have different ways of dealing with grief. I've sent him away. He's probably drowning his sorrows in wine now. Any word from Lurko? The Consul has announced that he wants to question this criminal himself, so I expect him to send some of his lictors our way. We are prepared for them. I don't think he'll try anything that overt. Nevertheless, we will be ready if he does. Let us go in. I'm not sure we can make him talk, but at least Kalita speaks his language. She was supposed to be here. I don't know what she's doing. We better make sure she's all right. Go find her. At once. Everything is silent. It's too quiet. I don't like it. He whimpers like a wounded dog. But silence is in the air. Is that fresh blood on him? What happened? He tried to lick me. Dan Era, his tongue is still attached, right? His tongue is, but not all his teeth. Do you think they would try to save him? <laughs> he is not worth saving. What makes you say that? He is caught. Do you think he deserves to die? He is evil. Does not matter if he dies. He deserves eternal torment. I will talk to him now. Fine. Well, here we go again. You want to try your hand at torturing me as well? Maybe. That is entirely up to you. Fair enough. I suppose you have some questions. <sighs> Ask, then. Let's get this over with. How long have you been working for Lurko? For too long. He hired me back when he assumed control of Weeksy. Were you working for Felix Hadrianus back then? Of course not. Weeksy existed in one form or another for hundreds of years. Felix is only the latest of its commanders. I'm no fanatic, though. He merely hired me as a contingency. I get the impression you are not the most loyal of Lurko's servants. I am loyal to my contract. Besides, all of his loyal guards are dead, thanks to you. If I have to choose between loyalty and death, I don't have to ponder my options for long. Would you work for me if I paid you more than Lurko? It's not just money. Lurko is a very intelligent man, and I respect that. He plans ahead, and he rarely leaves things to chance. I have noticed that. I wonder what he's planning this time. I honestly don't know. He is very good at keeping information contained. I only know what I need to know. You tried to kill me. Not out of any personal animosity. With Marcellus and his useless brutes gone, it was up to me to finish the job. Killing me wasn't enough? Did you really have to wipe out my family? That wasn't me. He hired someone else for that. My job was simply to get rid of you. The Consul obviously hoped you'd get yourself killed in Gallia. I guess this was his contingency plan. 
You of all people should know that warfare is about positioning. Once you can cover any possible move your foe might make, victory is a natural outcome. Merely by trying to win from such a position, your enemy defeats himself. Lurko has not defeated me. He has only made me angry. Anger won't serve you well against this man. Look, I'm getting bored of this. We both know you're not going to kill me, and I've told you all I know. Frankly, none of this is any use to you. For all I know, me getting caught is part of Lurko's plan. So, hand me over to the authorities and let me face charges. Not yet. Not until Lurko faces justice himself. It will never come to that. Dayanera, lock him up in the wine cellar, then meet us at the Regia. No problem. See you soon. Did he talk? I think he's still hiding something. But at least he's out of the picture now. That is comforting. I'm glad we have him. What do we do now? If the Senate is still in doubt when the trial resumes, this will settle it. By attacking my family, Lurko has implicated himself. This is so unlike him. Usually he has a plan. I wonder if the whole Corvinus business was a distraction. Distraction from what? Corvinus would be a good witness if we need it. He must know a lot about Lurko's schemes. That could be a benefit of all this, but if you couldn't make him talk... I've had less than a day to work on him. With enough time, he'll crack. I might want to meet him myself. If you ask the right questions, you can make anyone talk. Lurko is certainly doomed, but what if he runs? I took precautions. The Consul of Rome cannot leave the city unnoticed. None of my Praetorian guards have arrived? They were supposed to meet me here. I thought they'd be with you. I haven't seen any of your companions since yesterday. That worries me. Come to think of it, Kato wanted to meet us here too. But he's late. Where is Kato? He should be here any moment now. Don't worry. Kato is a smart man who knows how to handle a gladius. There he is. Your Praetorian guard is captured in front of the Senate. We must hurry. What? How? It seems he has them arrested for a number of crimes. Can he do that? He is still dictator. He can do whatever he wants. I fear there is nothing we can do to stop him within the bounds of the law. What are they doing in front of the Senate? Political theater. He has gathered a crowd and he's calling you out. You must be very careful. The lives of your friends are at stake. Is there nothing to be done? I'll try to gather some Praetorius. This is blatantly illegal, but I guess he's finally given up all pretense. He is desperate. Be very careful. Desperate men do stupid things. Let us go! I'll come with you to witness the situation. Keep him occupied until I can bring help. Don't antagonize him. I will come with you as well. Traitor to the Republic, murderer of Romans, enemy of the people. I have had your co-conspirators arrested, and they are patiently waiting for their moment of execution. But my own patience is wearing thin. I know villains like you do not have a sense of honor or virtue. Nevertheless, I know you were at least born Roman. If you have a speck of honor left, confess and surrender. Consul, what are you doing? You can't publicly execute people without trial. Our laws forbid such despotism. As dictator, prescription is well within my rights. The people of Rome saw fit to grant me that power. Who are you to question the wisdom of the people? Let them go. This is between you and me. They are people, are they not? They might have stopped serving you a long time ago, seeing how you are an enemy of the people. They are your compatriots, complicit in the same treason as you. 
They deserve death as much as you do. If you even touch a hair on any of their heads, I will choke the life from you with my bare hands. Don't do it. Can't you see he's trying to provoke you? And I am provoked, and that makes me his problem. On the contrary, you have already won. He knows he's a criminal. He knows the Senate will condemn him or sentence him to death. If you kill him now, you will forever be remembered as the murderer of the Consul, and he will be the patriotic martyr. Who cares if people remember him as a hero or not? He will be dead. I do. There is a way things should be done, and this is not it. He wants you to attack him. Maybe what he wants you to do is also what must be done. Unless your intention is to bore me to death, I would like to start executing these criminals. This is all shit! Those people are heroes! They've done nothing wrong! Let them go! You have lost your control, Lurko! Look at the faces of these people, your fellow citizens! They're afraid! Only criminals and traitors should be afraid of me. They're afraid of what you have turned the Republic into. That fear will turn into anger the moment anyone decides to stand up and protect the Republic. You're a good tactician. Consider your position now. Your prisoners are the only advantage you possess. But they're only valuable while they're still alive. The Legatus can wait until you turn yourself into a murderer. Or we can simply kill you and save them all. Then you will have achieved nothing here. You wouldn't do that. You're men of law and order. I shall grant you your death wish if it's the only way to save my friends. Do not let us take your vengeance away. Let us die in honor. Believe me, I don't want to die. But I also don't want to see you dead. Don't let him kill us like this. Whatever comes next, we will stand by your side. We will weather the storm as one. Don't do it, my friend. If you strike him down now, you'll give him legitimate cause to kill you. We are not worth that sacrifice. If he kills you, what happens to your family? You shall take care of them. And they can be proud of Enough! You. Make your decision. Lurko, you murdered my parents for nothing more than your childish delusions of power. You hide behind my brothers and sisters to keep your traitorous knees from crumbling as fast as your inept dreams. And a worm like you thinks you will live after all of this? I am Tullus Romilius Nazca, and I am an unstoppable juggernaut of war. I already gave one eye to protect and avenge Rome, and I still have one more. Romans die for Rome, and you will never have Rome. For I will die to keep it from you! What are you doing? You're giving up the high ground. This is what he wants. You'll be no better than him. Don't listen to Kikoro. The lives of your friends are worth more than your career. Let us end this. Get the victors! Get anyone!
your weapon, citizen. Step away from the consul. It pains me to say this, but you'll have to come with us. Do as the Praetor says. There's not much I can do at this point. Why did you do this? He was going to kill you, and no trial would have brought you back. The price was simply too high. Everything we've ever done, was it all for nothing in the end? It's a selfless act, Kaiser. The final sacrifice of the finest commander Rome has ever known. <laughs> you better remember this moment. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten, my friend. Let's go. You look miserable. I still look better than you. Liar. I had a chat with Kato. He says not even Kikoro can save you. Why did you do it? We were ready to die for you. Come closer, Kaizo, and I'll tell you a secret. Sometimes, I just do things without thinking about the consequences. The best of warriors fight with an empty mind. It really does sum you up, does it not? I see no reason why we have to leave you in there. You may be waiting to be exiled, but they will never let you live. You're too dangerous. So, do you want to get out of here? Where would I even go? You can go to Egypt. Surely Cleopatra will protect you. I can't let that happen to everyone. I must face the Senate's judgment for what I've done. You've done nothing wrong. Enough, Kaiso. He made his decision. We must respect it. Wally, my friend. I will never forget you. You did well. You did very well. Thank you. Thank you. For showing me the very best of Rome. The spirits will remember you. The winds will sing your name in their songs. This is not the end. The sacrifice of the savior of Rome has long since passed into legend. The historian's task is often to distill true events from the myths that are shared among people. But in this case, it proves nearly impossible to do so. It is said that the execution of Rome's savior led to 12 days of sorrow among its people. His corpse was taken from the temple by a mob stricken mad with grief and burned in the forum on a pyre built from the stolen furniture of every building on the Capitolium. Senators, eager to curry populist favor, declared his day of death to be a public holiday. Many built shrines of worship and reverence to their sacrificed hero. Whether these accounts are untrue or perhaps exaggerated, one thing is beyond doubt. Though he had given his life to do so, he had saved the Republic from the brink of tyranny and the temptation of empire. It is thanks to his noble sacrifice that our democracy has only grown stronger and that our Republic endures to this day. Cineros. Once he had been an athlete, a wrestler, and a troublemaker. But in our story, he was a Serwus, a protector, and a mentor. He had died diligently performing the task to which he had devoted himself, protecting his ward. Cineros was given a tomb in Rome's finest cemetery, next to his old Dominus, whose death had incited this story. Though his death had been unexpected, he met his end with dignity and resolve. He had received forgiveness and, after a fashion, vindication for the mistakes of his youth. He was missed by all those who knew him. Caeso left Rome with Lucia and their daughter. They traveled to Africa as Caeso remembered the warm nights and the lush Nile Delta fondly. Here they found a place to settle and made a peaceful home for their family. Though their relationship was distant at first, their devotion to their child drew them together and their affection for each other grew stronger through the years. To his surprise, Caeso took well to fatherhood, and soon he and Lucia had many more children. Despite her disillusionment with Rome and everything it stood for, Calida was at least finally vindicated in the eyes of the law. Around that same time, her mother passed away, and Calida reconciled with her brother Aulus, whom she forgave for not standing up to their parents. Thanks to Calida's talent for spycraft, she deftly maneuvered the turmoil that swept across Rome in the wake of her friend's execution. And with her help, her family business thrived. After the death of his friend, Bestia returned to the arena once more. But he was no longer a gladiator. His new vocation was to teach Pankration, 
inspired by the example of his Magister Cineros. He applied himself to this new calling with every bit of the vigor and determination that had made him a champion before. As soon as things had quieted down, Bestia traveled to Africa once more to look for his sister. He did find her and bring her home, and she lived happily there for the rest of her life. With nothing left to keep her in Rome, Deanera returned to her homelands in Shervia, where she reconnected with her family. Far from condemning her for her sister's death as she had feared, they were all overjoyed to have at least one of their daughters back. In time, Deanera built a new family in Shervia and became a revered matriarch of her tribe. She never left them again. Wutelia Skywala left Roman politics and moved to Upper Latium with his wife Liliana, where they raised their children together in peace. Cato remained an important figure in Roman politics, grudgingly respected even by those among the population who desired change. He remained a defender of the patrician class, a shield against the pandering and opportunism of more populist voices. He himself was elected consul twice throughout his life, and his years in the position were generally favorably regarded. Cicero served one more year as consul before his retirement. In his old days, he lived a quiet life on a farm in Sicily, where he was greatly beloved by the people for his time as quaestor. He continued to write many books on politics and law. Defeated once more by Rome, Mithridates escaped to the lands north of the Black Sea in the hope that he could raise a new army. But the locals soon rebelled against his rule. Incapable of taking his own life by poison, in the end, Mithridates died by the sword of his bodyguard. With Zenobia in charge of Musia, it became once more a peaceful part of the Roman province of Asia Minor. With her focus on trade and strong ties to the neighboring regions, her people enjoyed a period of great prosperity. Grateful for the mercy he had been shown, and no longer with Mithridates to tempt his greed, Damianos quickly resumed political leadership of Thracia. Here, the gladiator rebellion that had started in his school was threatening to spiral out of control. Thanks to Damianos, the gladiators were pacified quickly and without inordinate bloodshed. Lunia's death sent Nazamanes spiraling into a fractious conflict as greedy elders from minor tribes attempted to fill the void her passing had left behind. Though Queen Cleopatra attempted to bring the region under control, her attentions were too divided, the conflict too great for her to manage. Rome was forced to send more legions to enforce peace and stability with an iron fist. Though Africa Proconsularis eventually saw peace again, the traditions and culture of the Berber population were lost forever. Queen Cleopatra Philopator was, from the day of her coronation, a greatly beloved queen of Egypt. Revered and admired by the population, she spent many of her days traveling up and down the Nile to visit her subjects and address their troubles and concerns. Under her rule, Egypt remained a powerful and prosperous nation and a strong ally of Rome. The fruits of the Nile flowed freely to the people of the Republic. After traveling all across Africa for many years, Going wherever her instincts took her, Raya eventually returned to Memphis and to the service of Tenere at the Temple of Ubasti. When her mentor passed away, Raya naturally assumed the mantle as High Priestess of the Cat Goddess. Though the old faith was dwindling, she was greatly beloved by many, and her temple prospered, always home to many, many, many. With Diwitiacus once more assuming rulership of the Idwi, the tribe maintained a strong alliance with Rome, and through it, they greatly prospered. With the aid of the Idwi, Gallia slowly unified under Roman rule, and civilization soon began to creep into those lands in the form of paved roads, aqueducts, and fortified Roman towns. In his old age, 
Did the Druid ever regret hastening the absorption and suppression of his own faith and culture? We will never know. The once proud and strong Arwerni were greatly reduced by the defeat of Wakinga Torix, but his survival gave them hope. His will to make war upon Rome had been crushed, but he remained a strong figure of leadership among his people, even despite his failures. With his guidance, the tribes of Gallia remained unified and somewhat at peace, and vestiges of their culture and traditions survived their gradual subjugation under Rome. In this work, I have done my best to recount the history of this fascinating period truthfully and accurately. As I have scoured the sources and spoken to many who claimed to have heard the story from someone who was there at the time, one thing that has stood out to me is the pivotal moments along the way where our story could have turned out very differently. If the savior of Rome had fled into exile, would the absence of such a shining example of duty and sacrifice have left the Senate door open for another aspiring despot to take the throne? Or if Wetelius Lurko had not been struck down on that stage, would the death of an innocent hero of Rome have served as an equally strong example to the citizens and senators? Most intriguingly of all, if the Legion had crossed the Rubicon on that fateful day, might Rome now be no longer a republic, but an empire? One should always take care when second-guessing historical figures with the benefit of hindsight. Here in the present, there will never truly be a way for you to know how you might have acted if you had lived in the past. Nor can you ever be certain how history will remember you.